So let's have a little look at 2 Kings uh, chapter 4, verse 1. We're just going to get straight in there. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried to Elisha. So here was a woman. She was a widow, as we'll find out in a minute. And her husband was one of the sons of the prophets. That means he was one of the students, probably, of Elisha. And so he, the, her and her husband had, had kind of made it up in, in, in this time that they were living in, which was a very difficult time. There was famine, there was hardship, there was the economy had hit the floor. These were t- terribly difficult times. The, the kings were apostate. There was no help from the kings whatsoever. There was no help from anybody at this time. And she cries out to Elisha um, saying, your servant, my husband is dead. So here's the thing, they had, set, they had made up their minds to serve God. They'd made up their minds to walk with the Lord. And, you know, there are times when you, you, you kind of, you do end up thinking to yourself, is this, is this the reward? Is this the reward for following you, Lord? So this young lady and a, and a, and a young husband who, who had died, who feared the Lord, who sought the Lord, is dead. He's dead. And, um, and the creditor is coming. So not only that, but the creditor is coming, the Bible says, uh, to take my two sons to be his slaves. So this is incredible. This shows you what it was like to live in those days. There was no compassion. There was nobody helping anybody. Here was a situation where there was no hope for this woman and her two sons. You know... It tells us in in James, let's just have a look at it very quickly. In James chapter 1 verse 27 it says, Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. So we're told in the scriptures, both the Old uh, Testament and the New Testament, here's here's Psalm 72. In Psalm 72 it says that the king's job is to bring justice to the poor of the people and to save the children of the needy and break in pieces the oppressor. That was the job of the kings. But this was a terrible time. In this time, lawlessness abounded and the love of many waxed cold. You know, how it, how it was back then, we're moving into this time again. Lawlessness is abounding. There's very little um, to really praise the Lord for in terms of leadership. I find it amazing, by the way, really amazing, that before this pandemic, the rainbow was uh, an expression of, you know, LGBTQ. This whole lesbian, gay, free for all, everything goes thing. And yet now, it's like the, the, the schools have taken the rainbow back as a symbol of hope. How amazing, by the way, how amazing that only a few months ago, this was a symbol of complete a, a sexual free-for-all. And now it, it's a symbol from the children for hope. Very interesting. But you see, God brings hard times to shake us up and to help us to understand where we've gone wrong. Now then... What you see here is that people are unconcerned about this widow. I've heard, I've, I've seen many people at the moment that are in really difficult situations. And that might be you right now. You might be in an incredibly difficult situation. The problem is today is that actually most people now are in a, it's, it's not just this one or that one or the other one. Most people are finding themselves in a difficult predicament. So what do we do? Here, at this time, most people are in a difficult predicament. So who's going to care for the widow? Who's going to care for the orphans? And what happens here is she goes to the right man. She goes to a man of God. She goes to a man that served under Elijah, served Elijah for 10 years. He was a reliable man of God and praise the Lord, she went to the right man. Now let's, have, let's get straight into it. So then, so Elisha said to, said to her, what do you want me to do for you? It's very similar to what Jesus used to say, isn't it, in the Gospels? What do you want me to do for you? Tell me, what do you, want, what, what do you have in your house? What have you got? And she said, she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house 
but a jar of oil. Nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Let me go and get you a jar of oil. Here we go. A beautiful jar of olive oil. And here's another little jar here. This is what she had. And this is all that she had. Some beautiful olive oil. And that is it. That's all she had. Now then, there's a principle in this chapter which I believe is a key to this time period that we're moving into. What shall I do for you, tell me? What do you have in your house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Now obviously, in scripture, we know what oil represents. Of course it does. Oil represents the Holy Spirit. But she has this jar of oil and she's not doing anything with it. It's almost like she's holding on to it because this is all she's got left. Sometimes we can be like that as well as Christians. We kind of retreat inside of ourselves. We, 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 we crawl back into our own shell. And we, we, if we're not careful, we can get into this um, mindset of just kind of crawling underneath the table with, with the anointing that we've got and kind of just waiting for the end to come. But what she had was key. And what Elijah told her to do with this, of course, was key. So let's come back to the scriptures. Verse 3. Then he said, and this is his advice. Here's a little empty jar here. Go, borrow vessels from everywhere. From all your neighbours, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. This is Elisha's um, solution to the problem. Now clearly, in the physical, what's going to happen in the physical is very simple. She and her and, and and a sons, and you can imagine by the way how um, her sons would have, would have gone everywhere and knocked on every door going. They knew what this would mean if they didn't get a supply of oil, if they didn't get enough oil to pay off the debts and to, to make a living, those two sons would be sold into slavery. So you can guarantee that those sons went everywhere and looked for every single vessel that there possibly was. They went around their neighbourhood looking for empty vessels. Now, of course, in the physical realm, this simply was God's way of giving her um, something that she could um, use to sell, pay off her debts and also to live off. That's, that's the physical. But spiritually, there's something very precious going on here. He says to her, I want you to find as many empty vessels as you possibly can. Now then, it's, as, a, as a Christian, in, when, we, when we first get saved as Christians, it's the most natural thing in the world for us when we've been filled with the oil of the Holy Spirit to want to go to empty vessels, unsafe people that have nothing in their life and to, to, we go to them and we say we want to pour Christ into them. We want to pour the gospel into them. Y you know, it, it's as natural as rain for a new Christian to find empty vessels, to find unsafe people. They're there, they're all around us, they're in our neighbourhoods, they're in our workplaces, they're out there on the streets. You know, I can remember as a, as a young Christian um, um, seeing a street preacher on the streets of Sh Shrewsbury years and years ago. And I can remember saying to the Lord, Lord, give me boldness to do what that man does. I want to be able to do that as well. And as a young Christian, it's the most natural thing in the world to want to pour what God has given you into other people. But the older we get, we start to, we start to um, circulate around vessels that are full and and before we know it everybody around us is full and when everybody around us is full when their vessels are full they might not, might not be full with oil but they're full of something that they you they've got to be empty 
but they're full of something. There's no, there's no way for you to pour what God has given you into them. And I think as young Christians, we, we are brilliant at finding empty vessels. But the older we get, the more we lose that skill of realising that the greatest blessing in this world and the, the way to guarantee your spiritual prosperity is to always be pouring out into empty vessels. And somehow, somewhere along the way, maybe it's because we got hurt, maybe it's because we have had a tragedy like this poor woman, we take what we've got and we draw backwards with what we've got. But that's never the way with the Lord. He says, what have you got? Tell me what you've got. Well, I've got a jar full of oil. That's all I've got. And she wasn't doing anything with it. And this was the answer. Go and find as many empty vessels as you can. Now, this period of time that we're living in, there has never been a time like this. Certainly not in our lifetimes. Certainly not in my mum and dad's lifetime. And certainly not in my grandma and granddad's lifetime who have gone to be with the Lord years ago. There's been nothing like this. There is a window of opportunity now where all of a sudden... People's vessels are empty. They're starting to ask questions like never before. Now, it, it, we, we can, we, there's two ways of looking at our situation. We can look and think, my God, I'm in a real bad predicament, me. And all I've got is, is the Holy Spirit, that down payment that the Lord's given me. And I'm just going to go back and kind of shrink into myself. Or you can do what Elisha commanded the widow to do and say this, look... Take what you've got and find as many empty vessels as you can and start to fill them. Start to pour out what God has given to you. What did Jesus say? Freely you have received, freely give. And this is the key to both our spiritual prosperity, but I believe also that God never sees his righteous forsaken. I do believe that. We're not talking here about the faith prosperity gospel, right? Forget that. Most people know that that was always a dud firework. It was, it was always something that promised great things and, and produced nothing. And most people that go down or have gone down that avenue in their life realise it was, it, was, it, was, it was that Wizard of Oz moment when um, little Toto, when they finally go to see the wizard... And little Toto goes scuttling off behind a curtain. And of course, you see this, I am the great powerful Oz. That's like the, you know, the faith prosperity preachers of this world. Toto scuttles underneath the curtain and finds that there's this completely sad guy moving all these contraptions around, you know, and the whole thing is a sham. The whole thing's a sham. We know that the faith prosperity gospel is a sham, folks. However, there is a spiritual principle that God will never allow his righteous ones to be forsaken. But there are principles that we have to put into action and we have to move by faith. Even though we don't see anything, we have to move by faith. So this woman was commanded, I want you to find as many empty vessels as you can and use the oil that you've got and fill them. And the more that she poured out, the more that flowed out of her vessel. It's wonderful. The pitch is amazing. And, it, and the lesson is, is so, so simple. And it's simply this. As long as you keep pouring out into empty vessels, God will always pour into you. Always. And I believe it's a principle both spiritually and physically as well. In the physical world too. Let's have a look at what it says. Then he says, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbourhood, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. You know, what does the Bible say? Those that sow sparingly will reap sparingly. But what about those that sow and really sow? What about those that really find the empty vessels? You know, um, in this last two weeks or so, I don't want to mention any names, but in this last two weeks or so, I have had some incredible conversations with people. People in all kinds of really difficult situations. 
empty vessels that the Lord is saying, pour what I've given you into their life and watch what I will do for you. Freely you've received, freely give, freely give. Verse 4, and when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you. I love that. I love that because, do you know what? The other, the other day, I mean, it was a while back now. I'd just come out of hospital. Uh, I was feeling, I wasn't feeling very well. Uh, I, was, I, was, uh, I was in some discomfort and I was in this van and it was obvious by that point that this thing was going to, was out of control. This virus was out of control. The world knew it was out of control. Now it's scary, that is, because nobody knows the outcome. And I'm, I was in this van. And I'm lying in this van, and still at the front, actually, on the front there, and I asked the Lord, God, what is going on? What is going on? And the Lord gave, the, the Lord gave me the words from a hymn. Um, and, the, and the first words to this hymn are, the Lord moves in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. Well, I won't go any further with that, but it was... Um, William Cooper, and he had his own problems. William Cooper had his own problems, but, you know, there is something about that hymn. The Lord does move in mysterious ways. He, he doesn't move the way that we expect him to move. You know, Albert Einstein had no problem that there was a God of the universe, that there was a God that brought all this order and the laws of physics and the fine-tuning of the universe, the fact that we live in a Goldilocks zone, the fact that everything is just right for life. Albert Einstein could see that and understand that. The thing that Einstein had a problem with was, was with the fact that he didn't believe that God could be a personal God that could intervene into our life. He saw a God of order. He saw a God where the equations of this universe show that there has to be some kind of architect. He got that. Where he struggled is that there's a God that intervenes in our personal lives. Now, there is a God that intervenes in our personal lives, but so very often it's not the way that we think. You know, his ways are higher than our ways. The, the way that he does things is completely different. When he said to the children of Israel, I know the plans I have for you, I can guarantee you there wasn't one of those um, Jewish people that wanted that particular plan, not one of them. His ways are higher. Uh, the, 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 the Lord moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. He does move, he does answer prayer, but so very often it's not the way we want it to be. Elisha says to the widow, what have you got? She says, I've got a jar of oil, that's all I've got. Right, okay, go and get as many vessels. Who would have ever thought that that would be the answer to this scenario? Go to all the empty vessels that you can find and pour in what God has given you. And that is the key to this global pandemic. To you, Christian. To you who have the oil of gladness into your life. To you, wise virgin, that has got the oil. Go and pour out into empty vessels and God will begin to fill you and you'll feel the flow of the Holy Spirit through your life again and again. I haven't seen that many miracles in my life, but I'll tell you this. Every time I open God's word, every time without fail, I hear the voice of God speak to me. And his faithfulness is incredible. His mercies are new every morning. And the reason why he speaks when I'm reading the word is because I don't keep it to myself and I won't keep it to myself. We take what God has given us and we pour it into empty vessels. And that is what is happening here. And it's so simple and yet so wonderfully profound. He says... Go do it behind the closed doors. You've got all these people over the years trying to do it on great big stages. We've seen so many bogus miracles over the years. So many things that have dishonoured uh, and, 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 and almost, it's almost been the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit at times, some of the stuff that we've seen happen. And I love what Elisha says, shut your door when this happens probably for two reasons 
He didn't want people outside seeing the incredible blessing and prosperity that was being given to this woman and the two children. But at the same time, some of the most precious things happen behind closed doors. The Lord moves in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. Now then, shut the door behind you and you and your sons, then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the four ones. Set them aside. So she went from him and she shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. Now I'm, I'm pretty sure that that lad would have searched everywhere, everywhere for, for just one more vessel. Because he knew that if, if he didn't, he could be sold into slavery. So they, they made sure that every single vessel had been taken. And what does the Bible say? There's not another vessel, so the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debt, so that you and your sons live on the rest. As long as we flow into others, the oil of the Lord will flow through us. What's this what's this the the solution to this problem today? What's the solution? We we're all going to come in under uh, into economic and financial problems, aren't we? All of us are. However, this is what God commands us to do. Take what I've given you, find an empty vessel, And then when that empty vessel's been filled with the wonderful gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, go find another empty vessel. And then go find another empty vessel. And then go find another empty vessel. And God says, I promise you, every time you pour of what I've given you into somebody else, I will fill your vessel back up. That's the promise. That's the promise. The word of God says... To, to him who has much, more is given. To him who has much, more is given. Because the one who has much is pouring out more and more and more. Investing more and more of themselves into the kingdom of God. And it could well be that you've been asleep. I know to a, to a degree I've been asleep. You know, even the wise virgins that had the extra oil, you know, they all fell asleep, all ten fell asleep. But here's the time, here's the time. And as we pour out, we get more. God gives us more back. He will always, God is no man's debtor. The more we pour into other people's lives, the more God will fill our lives. Now you might be saying, well, how's that going to answer the problems in my life? How's it going to answer the immediate problems that face me? How's it going to answer my problems in church? How's it going to answer my financial problems? How's that going to give me a job? I don't know. The answer is, I don't know. But what I do know is that the word of God says to us, go into all the nations and preach the word. Go tell people about Jesus. Go take what God has given you and pour it into somebody and go then and find another empty vessel and find another empty vessel and use this time that we're in which is a highly prophetic moment where, you know, people are spiking at the moment. You know, even unsafe people are thinking, I, I can't tell you the amount of unsafe people I've heard say this, this is 666 what's coming. Unsaved people, their ears are open. Their ears are open for this time. What have you got? What have you got? I've got all kinds of problems, Lord. Yeah, but what have you got? Well, I've got a jar full of oil. This is a time for the vessels of honour. To show themselves as vessels of honour. This is a time for the treasures and jars of clay. This is a time for us to pour what we have into empty vessels and watch what the Lord does. You know why? 
You don't know what he's going to do. I don't know what he's going to do. But the Lord moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform, and he promises in his word, my ways are not your ways. He has plans for us. It might not be the plans that we can comprehend, but he, he, he says, look, just do the right thing and trust that I will come through for you. Let's put it like this. Let's go back to the words of Jesus. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you.